All right, we have our schematic. Looks pretty good, pretty basic, but we need to add some things to it because this is no longer just a simulation. This is a real world device, it's going to be on a real board, and we want to make sure it's going to function properly. Some things we don't know may be out of our control. Where does the 12 volt power supply, the plus or minus 12, come from up here? We don't know. You know, it could be 100 feet away through a little thin piece of wire causing a lot of impedance and inductance and give us problems with a power supply. So we try to do everything we can to protect ourselves in this case. So let's go to our libraries. We're going to start adding some capacitors in here. Change our library back to miscellaneous devices. There's a capacitor. I'm going to tell it place capacitor. I'm going to hit the tab key. Now I have my information up here, right? I can change it. It says cap. That's fine. Models, footprint, location. Let's see. Graphically, it should be just fine. But what we do want to change is the parameters. So I'm going to click on parameters. It says 100 picofarads. Now a common value for a bypass capacitor is 100 nanofarads. So I'm going to make that 100 nanofarads. Take my paws off. And I know I'm going to want, oh, I want one up here and here, right where the power comes in. And then I'm going to want one here and down here. I'll right click to stop placing. Let's go back to our libraries. There's the cap, and now I have a polarized cap. It has a different symbol. I'm going to place that also. I'll hit tab, come to the parameters. Here I might want to put a 47 micro farad. Much different value than we placed earlier. I'll unpause. We'll come up here. And over here. Look at that. Put that one this way. Now, I'm looking at these. I have all my red squiggles again because they all say C question mark. So, tools. Annotation. Annotate schematics quietly. Now, what if I just told it annotate schematics? Let's look at the difference. I've been using the short version. The long version gives you a lot of options. How do I want to number it, right? Here's the order of processing. Start at the top left and zigzag across, right? And I can start at the bottom. You have all these options. Where do you want to start? Up, I'm going to leave it there. I can also tell it a start index. I might want to start with 100 instead of 1. So I have R100, R101, R102. Uh, that's nice when I have more than one sheet. You'll see I just have one sheet in this project. I could have five sheets in a project. And if I had five sheets all going to one PCB, it might be smart if everything on sheet one started with 100 and everything on sheet two started with 200 makes organization and stuff a little bit easier to deal with and easier to figure out what's going on later that's what these do now i can tell it update change list six changes were made i can tell it accept the changes execute the changes close close Everything's numbered now. So you see it's a little bit more cumbersome, right? I have more options, a little more cumbersome. A lot easier just to do tools, annotate quietly, and let it go. All right, so let's wire this up. I see I have some problems here, so I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to take this right here. And I'm going to pull this across. And now I'll wire my negatives here, right? Here's the ground.
Okay, those are wired across. Now, if you look at it, you'll notice this capacitor is upside down. And this capacitor is right side up. Then there's a reason for that. This capacitor has the plus 12 volts coming in to ground. So this side of the cap is more positive than this side of the cap. This capacitor has ground here and minus 12 volts here. That makes this side of the cap more positive than this side of the cap. If you don't put it in that way, you'll have a problem. It'll reverse bias that capacitor, and that's a polarized capacitor. So when you reverse bias it, suddenly it'll start passing current. It'll get real hot. These are usually electrolytics. They get real hot. They start expanding, and there's little seams on there that will crack and let the gases out. Uh, the old days, they used to pop like a firecracker. So you want to pay attention. Put your polarized caps in the right direction. Now let's look here. Here's my 12 volts. I can put this up here, move this name, take this cap, hook it right up, and I'll want to put a ground on it. Won't do me any good without the ground. And we'll talk about why this cap is here in just a second. I just want to wire these up first. I'll take this guy. And I'll put a ground. I have a ground available here and a ground available here. So I hooked those grounds up. I put caps there. And let's talk about why we did that. Why would I want to do that? I've already put 47 microfarads up here, right? Why did I put a... Uh, Point 0.1 in parallel. Does that make sense? It doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Why would I do that? I put a 47 and a point 0.1 in, in parallel. Now, when we put uh, caps in parallel, let me update this because I don't see it written here. When we put caps in parallel, they add. So now I just went from 47 to 47.1, right? That's not a big increase. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right, if you just think about it. But there's a reason for that, and I'll explain it to you. Let me update this one. I must not have hit the enter key before, so it didn't show up. So now I have my 0.1 and 47 in parallel. Here's the difference. This 47 microfarad has a lot of capacitance, right? 47 microfarads. But it's not real fast. Think about it like a 55-gallon drum, and it's got a little hole poked in it, right? I can dump 55 gallons of water out of it, but not real fast. This little cap, it's a ceramic capacitor, actually made out of a little plate of ceramic like this, and they put metal on both sides and put leads on it. It's actually fast. It's much faster, but it can't hold a lot of charge. So the advantage here is I'm going to put those two in parallel, I get the advantage of both, a large capacitance on the big one, fast reaction time on the small one. So that makes sense here, right? I don't know where my power's coming from. Could be a noisy wire on a car somewhere, right? So it's coming over here, and I have these caps to clean it up. Now, why did I put another cap, another cap here and here? Well, I did that, and I'll show you why. Actually, I'll draw it out. Let's just say that here's my 12 volts, right? I don't know how it's going to get routed over to here. That wire on the board, right, physically placed on the board, might go around all kind of parts, right? It's going all over the place on this board. And it takes a long time before it finally gets over to its 12 volts over here. So now I look at it and it's like, wow, that's a long wire. And... What do I get with wire? Well, Ohm's law still works. There's resistance, right? It's a little piece of copper on the board. It'll have some resistance. And wire has inductance. So now when I have a fast current pulse, I'm going to drop voltage across the resistance. And the fast, uh, fast changes in current are going to be bucked by the inductance. And so I'll get a voltage drop over here. In order to fight that, fast response time, I use a fast capacitor, right? I use a 100 nanofarad ceramic cap. When I do that, I get rid of the problem of having the inductance and resistance next to my 
caps power supply because I, I don't know where it's going to be, right? It's just good practice on all your designs to put bypass caps on all the active parts. So here's an active part, right? It's an op amp. If I had a microprocessor, I'd put a 0.1 cap right on the power supply there. Any active part, I put a 0.1 cap. So here's our original design now. We've updated it. Bypass caps on our power input and bypass caps right on the op amps. Okay, thanks for watching and we're going to move on to our next video.